Awo, Shalom, Rastafari. And I'm giving thanks and praises to get through this heat wave that's going on over here on the East Coast. You know, it's a global phenomenon. Yet, and still, there are issues and matters that we need to discuss, brothers and sisters. And when we say Shashamani is still the issue, the land grant is still the issue, Exodus is still the issue. Um, repatriation is still the issue. However, the prerequisite is the knowledge of the King of Kings and Christ, is the real teaching of His Majesty. So once again, Senbet Salam, Shabbat Shalom, Sabbatical Peace, and this is going to be a preview. I want to touch on right here because we're continuing from the Rastafari discipleship, which was a uh, very important matter to really touch on. Um, there are some additional discipleship benefits that I now will seek to offer and encourage the disciples when they want to order books. In fact, let's do a little Rastafari book club and show you some of the new titles that are out. And hopefully, Ja Willen will have more of an opportunity to get into um, the books individually and speak about the merits or what we see to be the merits of these particular titles that the line of just society is able to publish. A Yehuda Moa Andesa Machiber Inyane. Is she? Is she? Okay, so let's touch on this. Uh, some Wuha. Some Wuha. Some water. Okay, so the the midbar. Now this is the thirty seventh. We're moving into thirty seventh Sabbatical. Um this is the Eve and we're gonna get into the thirty seventh um Shalak Lika the Hebrew but Ibrayusta Kwankwa Bamarinya in the Royal Amharic of the King of Kings of the Medhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals. This particular document right here, it is called um Lak uh, Til Kalachu, Lak Til Kalachu, which can be interpreted to be um, sent, um, you all who are sent. And this particular parsha, which is the 37th, or Rit Min Bab, and this is what's kind of very interesting about it, the number 37, we want to touch on that number, when the book of numbers, and biblical numbers are significant. Now, this particular portion right here, we find that the entire, ex, the, the entire five books refer to us as once lost but now found, Beta Israel. But there's a particular unique and, and, and prophetic connection with us as the once lost but now found, Beta Israel, with the Ethiopian Hebrews and, and with the fullness of the revelation of Rastafari. And, and in it is good news for I and I. So when we look at our present situation or condition as we look forward to the promised land and, 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 and we look at our surroundings and environment and the whole global prophetic situation, this, this, is, this is like the way, the truth, and the life because that word is that word of Jah. It's the true teachings of his majesty, but the, it's an application for us even in the present time that we are in. So we're going to get into this particular um, portion, this kuffal, or this parsha, which tells the story of the scouts, of, of the 12 spies, the spies who were sent into the promised land, and it was 12 of them. And then now there's a connection with the Ethiopian World Federation. There's a connection with the Shashimani land grant of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, given to we, the black people of the world, through the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Now, that is still the, that is still the reality for us. You know, there's a lot of um, discouragement. There's a lot of distraction. There's a lot of um, war against our true faith that wants us to look away from the word of John, to look away from the promises of the King of Kings and his Christ, and, and to be disoriented. Instead of looking to the east, they want us to turn our backs to John. And now we've gone through this 40-year experience from 1967. That's a key year because that's the year where the power of attorney 
authority for the land grant on our behalf was given to our late beloved brother, Fikra Selassie, otherwise known as Dr. Gladstone Robinson. And now we have 1967 um, to 2007. 2007 is the Ethiopian um, millennium. You understand? The eighth, the she, um, the she Ahmet, you understand? Or the, or the, 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 the eighth the millennium. The, now, now, this is very interesting, prophetically speaking, when we look at the prophetic um, chronology. So, with that being said, let's just go over this. So, this part is going to touch on the discouragement that these um, false spies, the, 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 the bad news, they didn't bring back good news from the promised land. So when we look at Ethiopia, we look at Africa, we look at the Federation, there's been a whole heap of bad news. You understand? And and little to no of our little to none of our divine heritage or or the dissemination of our ancient Ethiopian culture, of, of, of the language, of the scriptures, of the building of the true faith. You see, his majesty said with faith courage and a just cause. So we can't have true courage and be courageous as Moa and Bessas the Ibn Negeta Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, without um, grounding and founding and grounding on that, on, on that rock, building on that true foundation of our faith, you understand, of, of the ancient Judeo-Christian faith of Ethiopia that is variously called, some call it orthodoxy, but better is called Tawahido. And that's at the root of the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. So we have to recognize that, yes, we are Messianics. We are those who are of the Black Moshiach, or the Black Messiah. You understand? And that goes back to that same period of time in the late 60s. So now, 40 years later, you understand? Where do we find ourselves? Where do we find the generation? Where, where, where are the children? This, this generation, they find themselves in the valley of the dry bones. And all that is connected with that, with that curse for disobedience. But there's still the opportunity if we would preach and proclaim the word and the truth. And if we will live up to the life of Christ, to the glory of our Father, His Father, Abba Kedus Kedus Abba Tachin. All right? Now, this portion also speaks about the commandments um, concerning the offerings, as well as the story of a, of a Shabbat violator, one who violated the Sabbath or the Sendet. Now we want to touch on that as well, and and what and now we're speaking on Old Testament. Now don't get this twisted. We're speaking on Old Testament to get the basic understanding, to get familiar with the story. Now in our studies, we connect it with the New Testament or the covenant of the Moshiach. So we have the veil that was on the eyes in the Old Covenant is removed in the Moshiach. It is removed in Christos. It is removed in Christ, even for I and I, Christ in his kingly character. All right? That's just a point of order right there. Now, the commandment also of the fringes is spoken of in this particular parasha, in this particular portion. Now, just touching on the fringes, we're just going through an overview right here, and we want to speak about the fringes, um, deal with the fringes first. Now, Here's a couple of examples. This is a particular shirt right here, right? This is a particular shirt. Let's see if we can let you see, right? This is a particular shirt. It's a basic tee, right? And, and then at the bottom, as you can see, at the bottom, you know, speaking of the fringes, one of the brethren had asked about the fringes, the zit, the the zitzis, the zitzis, the Ibrahist. Now, this actually was made in Israel. Now, we have... Um, Rastafari um, Israelis or Israelis who are Rastafari and, and we hope to link up with those particular brothers and sisters and, and there's a community out there that is, is, is waking up and recognizing the true light of the Moshiach even in and through the Rastafari movement and that's beautiful we should see this is why we have to be on our true foundation 
then in the light of his majesty, we would know who's who, you understand, and how to fellowship, you understand, and to work with other groups, irregardless of, of these so-called um, racial or cultural or nationalistic um, differences. But see, that's where we have to come into our true person. We can't be niggers, blacks, and coloreds on the 13th and 14th Amendment with artificial names and being disorientated about who we truly are and about the knowledge of the Mushia and, the, and, and who we are and where we stand in the struggle, right? Now, this is some of the fringes right here. So this is like a T-shirt that can be worn. You understand? A T-shirt that can be worn. And we um, have been checking out some of the different companies, seeing some different products, ordering samples as we did right here. So this is one of the plain, the white fringes, all right? The, the plain fringes, right? The, the, the zarf, bomarinha, the zarf, or the zitsis, right? The zitsis. Now, it's in this particular portion, and this is another, another version of it right here we want to show you, all right? These are, these are another version of it, which can be, um, with with a small you see there's four of them right see there's four of them right there right now even the way that they are braided the whole science the ancient science behind it um is worthy of us studying up on all right now true this is a a symbolic some would say a symbolic ordinance and there was some would say that well we're in the new covenant you understand we do not have to wear that in the so-called new covenant for those who are gentiles that might be true but not for us who are beta israel who are as says aren't you like the children of the ethiopians unto me O children of israel now when you look at some of the um ethiopian clothing i mean the traditional and the ancient clothing they also contain this this was eventually um the, the type of fringes was eventually woven into the traditional garments so this is like one of the more ancient going back to one of the more ancient demonstrations of it and in modern clothing ethiopian clothing these have been you know basically like other kind of fringes like when we point out um these kind of fringes right here this kind of fringe all right you, you, you can see that and then you have this area right here you understand this tibet so forth and so on. We're going to get into the garments because we got to speak on garments and clothing. You understand? Even much of our economy as a people is, is really wasted on, as a holy people, um, buying and purchasing garments from the Gentiles. You understand? On certain levels, perhaps we can. But right now, there's, there's almost a wholesale, um, we give up our holy garments. And as we study the Torah portion, we get to recognize how important this is. For example, even the fringes. We're going to do a teaching on the fringes, but here we want to highlight this. A, a brethren had asked about these fringes. Um, and some of the sisters, um, I mean, in, in some of the communities even today, you know, some of the sisters who are good with, if you look at this kind of knot work right here, all right, you can see this knot work right here. And if you check out some of the sites on the internet, how this spells Yahweh's name, how this spells the so-called ineffable name of the Lord. So it's not just wrapped around, but it's wrapped around where it's spelling a name based on numbers. So they're, they're, it's just more than just the fringes in itself. It's also the braid work. You understand? And the numerical, some say Kabbalistic, if they will, Kabbalah, you understand, value that it has as well. So this is another aspect and area. Now, this particular company and some of the companies that we have dealt with so far have given us pretty good service, and we are praying and considering whether we would like to give them um, more of our business. So we're going to try to maybe have it uh, on a page or a particular page if one want to order these until we, within the community, in the community, until we in the family, and such as the society of match, can start to do these things for ourselves. So on the fringes. Then it had a little note that was attached to it as well. Right? 
this little note that was attached to it as well. And it's basically numbers 15, 15 and 37. This was this was in the um in the package right here, numbers 15 and 27. All right. I'll read this and it basically reads um the Lord Adonai said to Moshe Musa Moses as follows verse 38 speak to the Israelite people and instruct them to make for themselves fringes which is um like this fringes right fringes in the on the corners on the corners of their garments on the corners of the four corners of their garment thus we have um four of these fringes which can be um uh, clipped on with a small uh like safety pin right there to the four corners to the four corners of the garments right so here from numbers chapter 15 verses um, from verse 37 when verse 38 where it says speak to the Israelite people and instruct them and, and instruct them to make for themselves fringes on the corners of their garments throughout the ages throughout the ages 